time at the Freakers Ball right here on RealLibertyMedia.com. It is Friday, March 23rd, 2018, and we are live right here, right now on the Freakers Ball. Uh, welcome to everybody out there that may be listening in, in the various places that we may listen, we may listen in, you may listen in from. I'm not listening. I'm here. I'm talking. <laughs> But anyway, welcome to anybody that's on the RLM radio. I don't think we get too many on the RLM radio. Uh, we got a couple, though. we got a couple fine young ladies there on the audio stream, so welcome to you. And uh, welcome to everybody over there at Freedoms Network that may be tuned in. Uh, howdy to anybody that's there. And uh, welcome to everybody here where the place you ought to be on the RealLibertyMedia.com website and on Channel 1, that is the Freakers Ball Show page. And also here in the chat room on irc.freenode.net. And, and you get all the great folks that are here uh, in the chat room in Pound Pound uh, Real Liberty Media. Yeah, that is our main chat room. That's where we talk to the folks, where people make requests, and people talk to us. Yeah, it's kind of a one of those things, you know, they throw out a comment, we throw out a comment. Da, 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 da. Funny how that works, conversation. <laughs> anyway, let me say hi to the folks that are there in the chat room this evening. we got the uh, barman, of course, always there, Mr. Cowboy Tech, um, myself, and the Mighty Moose Girl, who will be joining me shortly, I assume, uh, Miss Kate, and as Modius, Beth Z, hope you're uh, doing all right there, Bessie. Anyway, we got Chelsea Doni in Circle and Chloe, Mr. Free Enslaved, and Graham Z, who's maybe still out to dinner. I don't know. She had, she had to uh, do a late late show and then go for a late dinner, so uh, wherever she may be. Uh, and I be Don C, Java Doctor, the JJ Man from Scotland, Mr. Wanataco, thanks for the nickels, Mr. Meister Brow, Rain and the Fluke Butt, and Mr. Romes, a.k.a. Trust No One, who is sending me a new component for the barman's failed component that he sent me in the first place. Such a generous guy, that Romes. Gotta love him. All right, now we got Woodman, who is also uh, Meister Brow. We have somebody who is averse to something, maybe everything. I don't know. His name is averse. I, I assume him. Uh, uh, don't, don't let me. Don't let me. What, what was that? Gender assume. <laughs> we got Kovax and Dakota and Dima and Frumpy and Kozu and Mo E and Boxified and oh, we got two Boxifieds. One's Poxy Home. How about that? Uh, Gooberzilla just jumped on back in. And did I mention Frumpy? I think we did. Uh, a, 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 anyway, uh, we got the Pone Sauce and Slim Jim Flim, Teddy and Phantom and. Who knows who else is out, uh, but those are the people here in the chat. So, uh, howdy and welcome to y'all. Um, I, I don't know where Moose Girl is. She said she'd be back, but uh, she she may have been delayed slightly. Who knows? Uh, you know, when, when when times of things get shifted off from here to there, it's, it's, a, it's a little slightly bit confusing uh, for us all. Um, let me mention that today... Starting today, earlier today, at 1 p.m. Eastern Time, Vincent Easley started a new show. He used to do a show, and then before that he did a different show. But now he started a new show, and his new show is called Ponder, a Ponder Gander. Now, I'm not sure he's keeping with that name, because he, he gave me some other information that I'm not too sure he's... He can be confusing. I don't know if you ever sat around talking to Vincent Easley, but yeah, he he could be a little bit um, <laughs> his thought stream kind of wanders. So um, <laughs> when you're talking to Vince, keeping track of of his thought train is not always the simplest thing to do. Anyway, uh, we love Vincent here. He is our roving reporter. Out there, he's right now. He's in uh, Las Vegas. He's been there for a while, but he's been around. He's been around the country over the last year, uh, and uh, eventually, I, I, he says he's going to return to his home state of Arkansas, and then uh, maybe wander on up to Tennessee. Who knows? 
It's up to him. He's 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 a he's a free man on the land. Kinda. <laughs> Anyway, um, I, I don't see Moose here, and that's kind of a shame because I lined up the first set uh, of, of songs under her request line. Uh, well, well, that's all right. We could, we could start with a, a news story, I suppose, um, and wait for her to show up. So let, let's see what we got here for you. Um, and, 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 well, I'll save that one too. Um, <laughs> we'll start off with something really stupid because, well, you know, it's a stupid world. <laughs> this article, and, and this is not the only one. Uh, there's a lot of articles similar on this particular topic that, there today. Um, because of what happened, I guess, today. I, I haven't been really keeping track, so I don't know when this assignment was done, but all the news seemed to break today about this particular subject. And it says, and this is on uh, the antimedia.org. America's Worst Nightmare is the name of the article on Antimedia.org, written by Darius, some name I can't pronounce, last name. <laughs> uh, new Trump advisor John Bolton is America's Worst Nightmare, so the article says. And before I get into it, before I share any of it with you, uh, I, I want to make a statement on my own about this. Moose Girl will be here in a few minutes. Very good, Moose Girl. Um, John Bolton is a horrible, horrible person. He's a warmonger. He's a Zionist. Uh, he, he, he loves doing all that stuff. However, it's not up to him, and it's not up to Trump, whether there's a brand new war. That is settled way above them way above their pay grade in the Bankster Cabal, the Bankster Coalition, the Rothschild House. Having said that, and you understand where I'm coming from on this, I'll share the article with you. <laughs> John Bolton's inclusion in the Trump administration as Donald Trump's new national security advisor is nothing sure, short of a nightmare. Nothing short. Bolton, a former UN ambassador under W, will be replacing H.R. McMaster as Trump's national security advisor, who replaced the former disgraced national security advisor, Michael Flynn. What, 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 a, what a constant stream of morons this guy uh, gets in that position. Well, in all the positions, but whatever. Anyway, when the president struck a Syrian air base in April 2017, the president did that? I don't think he had really had too much of a hand. It was McMaster who drew up and briefed Trump on the strike proposals, uh, one of which was reportedly very extensive. McMaster, who also reportedly uh, was also reportedly one of the main backers of a secret plan to give North Korea's Kim Jong-un a bloody nose strike. A bloody nose strike. Is that what you call killing a whole bunch of people? A bloody nose strike? A limited strike to dismantle its nuclear ambitions without risking an all-out war. However, despite this, it appears that McMaster wasn't hawkish enough warlike enough for Donald Trump's desires. While McMaster publicly berates Iran and North Korea on a regular basis, he persistently warns against Trump's plan to completely derail the Joint Comprehensive Plan of Action with, <laughs> formed with Iran in 2015. And again, what has Iran done? What has Iran done? Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> anyway, he also later denied the claim that the Trump administration was looking to deliver the bloody nose strike on North Korea, perhaps indicating he was not completely on board with the idea after all, or had decided otherwise at a particularly particular juncture in history. Enter John Bolton. Less than a month ago, he wrote an op-ed article uh, published by a Wall Street Journal entitled, 
the legal case for striking North Korea first, a.k.a. preemptive war. An idea so bad, it seems that about a week later, WSJ published a counter-viewpoint simply entitled, Striking North Korea First is a Bad Proposal. In Bolton's short-sighted op-ed, aside from the fact that he offers no real legal analysis at all, even though he calls it a legal case, uh, uh, th those who do consider it a legal analysis must explain why the argument of preemptive self preemptive self-defense. Now, talk about your oxymorons. Preemptive self-defense applies to the U.S., but not to North Korea, which faces American aggression near its borders on a routine basis. It, uh, not to mention all the sanctions. It's it also quite telling that he relies on evidence of the CIA director, Mike, Mike Pompeo, who allegedly allegedly, in January, stated that Pyongyang was only a handful of months away from being able to strike the American mainland with nukes. Comment from him based upon zero evidence. It is no coincidence that next in line for Donald Trump's Secretary of State position is that same Pompeo. Together, Bolton and Pompeo will be able to advise Trump on anti-North Korean and anti-Iranian platforms they are so eager to get on with. There's no telling what's to come. As some of you may know, Bolton's hawkishness has already led to some of the most despicable foreign policy agendas in our generation. Yes, yes. Quote, We are confident that Saddam Hussein has hidden weapons of mass destruction and, uh, and production facilities in Iraq, Bolton famously said in 2002, while so serving as W's Under Secretary of State for Arms Control and International Security. He also called Hussein a threat to the region and carried, uh, claimed that he needed to be disarmed. Well, they didn't quite disarm him, but they, because he didn't have any arms to disarm, but they did, did dishead him. <laughs> I don't know how many of you remember the, uh, the scene where, where they were trying to hang him and his head popped off, if that was actually even him in the first place. Um, yeah, they, they disheaded him. They, they, they didn't disarm him. Um, <laughs> it, it's just all insane, you know. Um, it, yeah, Skype, Moose Girl. It, 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 it's, it's, it's crazy stuff. And um, to, to say that he is America's worst nightmare, no, again, that goes back to the, those very same Rothschilds in the, in the global banking cabal cartel, whatever you want to call them. Um, they're the ones that get to call the shots on whether or not there's going to be this war bombing here, bombing there. Um, but this guy is a great boogeyman, and 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 he's great a great person for the anti-war folk. I, I would include myself definitely in that group, the anti-war folk, and I, I'm sure most of the folks here in Real Liberty Media chat are also the anti-war folks because I, I don't see Hansel here right now, and he's the only pro-war folk that I know, um, or know of. I don't actually know him, thankfully. <laughs> but, <laughs> be, be, that, be that as it may. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so there's that article for you that came out today. So Since that happened today, uh, there, there was other Trump stuff, other Trump news. Uh, Mooster, I'm going to go ahead and play some music chat here. So uh, just just uh, wait until this is over and and, uh, and then call in after that. Uh, but we're going to kick it off here with a total Moose Girl request set at the top of the show. Or close as we get to the top of the show for our music set. <laughs> oh, God. 
Where are we at here? Here we are. All right, this is The Doors. Yeah, triple play, uh, play the doors there. Uh, all Moose Girl requests the doors with Light My Fire from uh, the Hollywood, live from the Hollywood Bowl back in 1968. Before that, the doors with a Backdoor Man. And we kicked it off with the doors doing 5 to 1. Ah, I love that band. Great band. <laughs> yes, indeedy. Uh, they, 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 they got into some really good music. Look at this. We got a phone call coming in. Hello? Hello. 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 Hi. Hello. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, good. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm, starting good. To, I'm, starting, I'm starting to wonder there. <laughs> me too. Wow. Oh, boy. Hello. <laughs> yeah. Hello, hello. Hello, I love you. Won't you tell me your name? That's from a door song. It is, and since we just played a bunch of doors, I figured it was. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Moose Girl. Uh, oh, really? Yes. Wow. <laughs> That's what I go by. Okay. Like on the on air. <laughs> she is Moose Girl. That's her name. That's all I. That's all I, I I don't I don't call her by her whatever really? you call it government name. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Uh, well, how's you. it going? It's going pretty good. Sorry, I was late. That's Sorry. all right. Got to uh, you know share a story up front, which is you know different. We don't normally do that, but right. I figured it was topical in the news. <laughs> right. Cool. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, uh, so, uh, what was I going to ask you? I don't know. I don't know either. See how that works, damn brain. <laughs> yeah. Um. So yeah, you know, Eau Claire, Wisconsin. Yes. Four 15-year-old kids. No, a group of like 10 or 12 kids. But oh. only four four were taken or arrested or whatever. Okay. Or put in, a, in state custody or whatever they call it. Do we? Um, and they're all freshmen, all 15. This happened March 22nd. This came, well, this is the update. So this yes. happened Wednesday. So yesterday. It happened yesterday? Okay. Uh, no, it was the day before, I'm pretty sure. Okay. Wait, 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 let me see. Yeah. Anyway, uh, according to Eau Claire Police, there were 10 to 12 students involved, included in the string of messages sent back and forth between them. Police said a group of Memorial High School students shared messages indicating a mass shooting would occur at Memorial High School on Monday, March 26th. It was a generalized threat, but it was specific enough that they were, where they talked about doing a mass shooting on Monday, the first day back from spring break said Eau Claire Chief Deputy Matt Rokas. Of those 10 to 12 students, four of them, three boys and one girl, made threats. All four 15-year-old freshmen. One of the students told a parent who then told police. Our school resource officers, having the ability to work closely with school staff, really helped resolve this quickly. Rokas said they interviewed quite a few students, faculty, parents. They were able to get a hold of the text message and the photographs, and that all played an important factor in resolving this quickly. For the most part, we understood what happened, we knew who was involved, and we were able to deal with it very quickly. Police said each of the four students had various degrees of involvement, but police believed this to be a credible threat because students had weapons and a plan in place. This was a real threat, Roca said. There was a lot of specificity. The students that were involved had access to guns, and they were specific in the words they were using on how they were going to carry out this threat. Memorial High School Principal Trevor Kohlhepp told News 18 the school is safe for students to return after spring break on Monday. He thanks the police and school administration for acting so quickly. So is it spring break right now? Yeah. Oh, okay. 
Yeah. And, and uh, did they say what the purpose was? They didn't say that. They just said there was a... They, didn't re they don't release all the information, Grim, you know that. They're not going to release the messages that were sent back and forth and stuff. They might down the road, but... Yeah. These kids are all 15. But I was talking to the boys a little bit on the way to dinner, and I just said, they're like, oh, yeah, kids joke around about it all the time. I'm like, you can't joke around about something like this anymore. No, no, there's three... Too many overreactive people out there, you know? I mean, you know, it's... You can't joke about it, you know? You you just can't. I mean, like, they did a story this, this week, too. A 17-year-old kid from, like, a different school district um, got in trouble, too, because he made a comment to someone that was a joke, though, he said. But you can't even make a joke about it. Like, you know, you can't. Right, yeah, these assholes have no sense of humor. And, and, but, uh, you know, uh, right. who, know, who knows? Who knows with the with the freaking drugs that these kids are on, you know, from... Right, I mean, I'm, they, you know, I'm they, happy they pump that... Them all full I of the, said to the kids, I said, I'm happy that someone told a parent. Because they just seem, thinking of this happening here or something like that happening anywhere, but here, especially, where I know kids that go to that school and, you know, it's it's... You know what I mean? I know teachers at that school. I mean, I know people that go to that school, right? And it's like, that would be horrific. It would be absolutely horrific if something like that actually happened. You know, here, knock on wood. You know what I mean? R right, but, you know, like I it's said... It's horrific it was... if it happens anywhere. Don't get me wrong. It's not just here. It's anywhere. Well, with, with, all, with all the, uh, the stuff, you know, they pump these kids full of Ritalin and SSRIs and... Yep. And yep, who the hell they knows do. what? And they start them at a young age on, on, on that stuff. Yeah, oh yeah. So, uh, you never know. You never know what's going on. And kids are kids are uh, inherently unstable to begin with. A kid, Corey and the boys, though, <laughs> they were like didn't seem too concerned about it. I'm like, this isn't funny. I'm like, this is a real thing. You know what I mean? I believe that. I don't think this was like a false flag. You know what I mean? This was like a... You know. Anyway, those four kids, the four of them are expelled for good. That means you're done. They're done. They're not coming back to that school. Or any other school, probably, I would imagine. Right. I mean, they just mess up their lives for a long time. Like, you know. Now, uh, wait, how did how did they find about uh, find they out about it? They were talking about it on Facebook Messenger. Oh. And posting pictures of guns. Oh, so they were and not the... And uh, telling the plan via Facebook Messenger. Which not, is, they were stupid right there. Not, not the sharpest knives in the drawer. No, no, you're going to get busted if you do it via that. <laughs> you communicate via Facebook Messenger about a uh, school plan, school shooting, you're going to get you're gonna get busted. Right. I, yeah, you but, know, but it would be... Just, a, I mean, it would be interesting. I mean, are they like... Well, uh, like... The loser the reason, kids, you know, the ones that's who get... What, see, that's what Zach was wondering. He's like, it's probably kids that are being bullied or that, that, that are like the alt cast. Yeah, I he, go, yeah, probably, because, see, the thing with Memorial, okay, there's two high, two public two public high schools in Eau Claire. Yeah. Memorial North, or Eau Claire North and Eau Claire Memorial. And it's obviously, it's a big rivalry in sports and everything, but I know a lot of the kids that go there and stuff. You know what I mean? Right. Just from my kids playing sports and everything. But anyway, um, it's a lot of the rich kids. There's a lot of rich kids there. And I'm talking really rich, like not just middle class. You know what I mean? Okay. And some of them rich kids can be just as bad as, like, the so-called outcasts. Or the, you know what I mean? Right, right. So it, it's it could be... A, a combination of things. You know? Like, we were trying to figure out, like, what kind of kid was planning that. You know what I mean? Yeah. And usually, I, I mean, to get three of them together to do that, that's that's kind of unusual. Four. Whatever. Well, there was a total of 10 to 12, a group of kids. Yeah, that, so that, that's that's really unusual. Right, and the, the, the four were the ones that actually made threats and said specifics about what they were going to do or whatever. You know, that's when they got... Those four are in custody. Yeah, yeah. 
Huh. You have but, a link to that story? Yeah, yep. Yeah. I mean... Yeah, you know, normally it's, uh, well, they had the Columbine, they had the two kids. Yep. And, uh, but mostly it's one kid, or, you know, one person. Right, kid right, not, a lone, but... a lone thing, not a group thing. Yeah. Yeah. Because, uh, I mean, you know, how do you, and if, the if, age, you if you're planning... I mean, not the age doesn't really <laughs> bother me, it's just they were fresh, they're freshmen, you know what I mean? It's like, wow. Yeah, but if you're planning that kind of thing, it's. It's like, can you, you know, w would you really trust somebody else to keep the secret? Right, that's the thing. You know. But they were, I mean, I'm not saying, it, I'm glad they got, this got thwarted or whatever. Yeah. Definitely. Um, but they, they were talking via Facebook Messenger. Yeah, yeah. morons. I'm just glad one of those 10, 10 to 12, the group of the kids, out of one of those parent, what, out of that 10 to 12 group, the, the whole group, someone... And one of them was a girl. Yeah, the huh? wherewithal to tell a parent, so the parent could go to the cops with it, because this was a credible thing, and it was a good thing that someone actually spoke up. In this and, 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 so one of them was a girl, huh? Yeah, it was three guys and a girl. Because you don't, you don't normally hear a girl planning that kind of thing. It's, it's 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 not a it's not a girl type thing. <laughs> you there? Yeah. I'm here. All right. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, I know that it's so hard sometimes to know. Well, let, let me let me let me uh, let me make, make a comment to the okay. comment in the chat here by Free Enslaved. He says, "Hey, let's dock over Fort Knox and grab all the gold that they have that's stored there." There's no gold there. That's 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 exactly right. <laughs> There's no gold. That's Fort Knox. That, that place has been cleaned out years and years ago. <laughs> oh yeah, long time ago. <laughs> I know, I know, free. Uh, but but there I, is uh, <laughs> one little bar there. When you go there to tour it, because it's still a tour, you know, it's still a place to see or whatever for whatever reason. Cause yeah. I've actually been there. Right. And you go there, and they got one gold bar there that you look at. It's Ooh. like oh, big whoop. Yeah. And it's this most, it's just the blandest building. There's nothing special about it. It's, there's nothing special about it. Yeah, it's, it was, like, disappointing. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you're not, they're not going to show you all the gold anyway, but you see, like, one bar or something. And who knows if it's if even real gold. It probably isn't. Right. But it's... it's it's kind of interesting to go there and visit there because it does have some history to it, but other than that, it's just an empty building, basically, right now. Oh, they might store some stuff in there, but it's not gold. Right. Guarantee of that. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, well, I'm, I'm glad you didn't have any big deals going on. Right. Uh, can, I mean, can, can you just imagine... Bad. I mean, you imagine the media circus that would be in town if oh, that happened. Oh God! Oh God! Oh God! It would be horrible. <laughs> you'd have all the media. It would be horrible. It all, would. I mean, you'd have all the idiots marching up and down the street. Right. Oh God! It would be horrible. But because you don't want, like I said, you don't want that to happen anywhere. You know. Right. Right. Um. So I'm glad that this is. Uh, Sorted or whatever. <laughs> um, I can't say that word. That word. Anyway, um, um, yeah, they they try that blame the video games. Yeah, they try to blame video games or whatever. Which I don't know. <laughs> All right, well, this story came out earlier this week, and I, and I thought it was amusing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> amusing, yeah. Um, Democratic counselor apologizes for anti-Semitic remarks for saying that Rothschilds are controlling the climate. So, apparently, this guy, a Washington, D.C. city council member, 
uh, was has publicly apologized for making remarks refer referencing a popular online anti-Semitic conspiracy theory. The Facebook <coughs> video uh, posted Friday was subsequently taken down. However, and aside from this article, at no point in it does he mention anything anti-Semitic. All he says is the Rothschilds. So what they're saying, what they're admitting to by calling this an anti-Semitic uh, rant is that the, these Rothschilds are, are somehow tied into and the <laughs> the, the, the whole Jewish deal, um, and, and although they're, they're they are Jewish and Zionists, uh, he never mentions anything other than that. He just gives the name. He says, "Man, it just started snowing out 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 of out of nowhere this morning. Y'all better pay attention to this climate control, man. The climate manipulation in D.C. Uh, keep talking about it. We we res we resilient city." Councilor Trayvon White, 33, said the, to the Washington City paper, and that's the model based off the Rothschilds controlling the climate to create natural disasters they can pay for to own the cities, man. He added, be careful. Now, at no point in there does, he, does anybody say that the guy was wrong or that, they, that they're not doing this. They just went ahead and, and, and pulled out the anti-Semitic card. <laughs> and and the pussy ass back down. And, oh no, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to be up to, uh, like I said, where, 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 where did you say anything? He says uh, White made the comments while driving along Interstate 695 through downtown Washington Friday morning. He was elected to the D.C. Council in 2016, representing Ward 8, the city's poorest district. He also uh, he's also the youngest representative of the 13 member council. He, he also referenced 100 Resilient Cities program established by the Rockefeller Foundation in 2013, adding further conspiratorial overtones, not incorrect, no, 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 just conspiratorial, uh, to his bizarre, bizarre public outburst. He says, I did not intend to be anti-Semitic, and, and see, I, I should not have said that after learning from my colleagues. Uh, White said later in an online apology, understand that the history of the comment may oh, that the <laughs> understanding the history of the comment made against Jews. But but again, he he never mentioned Jews anywhere. He just said Rothschilds. <laughs> right. <laughs> exactly. Spot on, man. Spot on. Uh, but but. But uh, you know, I, I, I suppose in order to uh, to uh, keep his uh, position, um, uh, yeah, yes, indeed, they are free. He says White's comments referenced a commonly shared internet conspiracy theory, a true conspiracy theory, uh, conspiracy factoid, that Jewish financiers control the world, or in this case, the weather. He specifically referenced <laughs> the Rothschild dynasty descendants of an 18th century Jewish banker who lived in what is now modern-day Germany uh, while White was condemned by the members of the Jewish community online just for saying the name Rothschilds. Wow. Yes, yes. This kind of oh, anti-Semitism kind of anti is unacceptable in any public official. <laughs> <laughs> Give me a break! You know they 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 they, they pull that thing right out of right whoosh! Anti-Semitic, anti-Semitic! <laughs> wow! Oh God! <laughs> yeah, Silverstein that was definitely hit on 9/11. Um, <laughs> yeah, I don't think there's ever been a question about that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's not real seat. No, no doubt about it. Yeah, yeah he watched it all happen. He's the one that told him to pull it on, on Building Seven. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. here's that one about this other seventeen-year-old kid. All right. Um. Uh, Alleged threat aimed at Barron High School as a result of charges against a the student there. Austin Bank 17 is charged with misdemeanor 
disorderly conduct. According to a cr criminal complaint, he told a couple of students words to the effect, I'm going to shoot up the school if I can get more than 17 people. That's an apparent reference to the number of students that were recently before a school shooting. <laughs> it's not funny. Um, investigators <laughs> said Banks stated it was just a joke. Right, it's, like a it's like a competition. It's like a competition down or something. Right, yeah. <laughs> investigators said Banks stated it was just a joke and that he and his friends had joked about that sort of thing since junior high, but said he would never do something like that. He refused to name those friends. He's free on bond with orders not to possess any gun. Guns or go on the school premises, so he's expelled. <laughs> <laughs> What's the charge? He's charged with dis misdemeanor orderly dis conduct. Orderly conduct. Misdemeanor disorderly conduct. What, what the hell does that mean? <laughs> it, it, it's a blanket term. It's a blanket phrase. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, craziness. I mean, that's why I told the boys, I'm like, you can't joke about this shit. Nah. Well, people say it all the time. I'm like, I don't, you can't joke about this shit. Not today. Not in this day and age. Right. You just can't. No, no, no. They just don't have any. It's like saying the, the word bomb in an airport, you know? They'll, right. They'll, they'll right. do all kinds of things. That's a good nasty. idea. You, I mean, go for it if you want. Lot, but yeah, if, if you see, if you if really, you're in, if, <laughs> if, you you're in the, if you're in the airport and you see your friend Jack, don't yell out, "Hi, Jack!" <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> they don't. They won't deal with that. <laughs> no. I mean, first well, off, you they hire, not be saying certain words there. You know, they, they hire the biggest morons to start with, and and, and they're angry, aggressive morons. Yeah. Typical, you know, perfect for the police department, but... So they don't make enough money. Oh, they make plenty for what they're doing. <laughs> yeah, I guess. Oh, uh, That's a good question, Free Slave. I don't know when Jew became a race. It's really not. Israeli, maybe. Um, yeah, I, it's I, a reason. Hebrew. Hebrew, yeah. Okay, something like that. Yeah. But Jewish is a faith. Yes, Jewish is a religion. Isn't Hebrew a faith? Judaism too? Judaism it's actually called. Isn't isn't Hebrew a faith too? That I mean it's the same thing, right? Yeah. Well, like the stuff's written in Hebrew, isn't it? Ashkenazi, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> oh god. Alright, you ready for some more music here? Sure. All righty. One of my favorite bands, a live performance actually, by a band cool. that is best is the studio band. Where, where, where my All camera? right. Where'd my camera go? Oh, there it is. Um, Blue Oyster Cult? Yes, yes. Ha <laughs> ha, I guessed it. Right I before know. you played my good on there, I guessed it. <laughs> <laughs> Cities on Flame. I love that rockabilly, let me tell you. That is Junior and the cellmates there with a rockabilly feeling. Uh, before that, we had Mick Jagger and Tina Turner. Uh, they did, uh, what was that first one they did? Uh, I forget. But but they, uh, the, it was, uh, it's only rock and roll, but I like it. Uh, from Live Aid back in 1985. And we kicked it off there with the Blue Oyster Cult doing Cities on Flame with rock and roll. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, man. Uh, that's that's some good stuff. I love that rockabilly. It's a, just some great, great stuff. It is. It is. <laughs> oh man. Let's see what I got here. Yeah. What else you got there? What else is left? Well, that's recent, just major solar storms causing anxiety. That's from last oh, week. Oh, well, let me tell you. Let me tell you. I almost, I almost decided to call off my part of the show here tonight. Oh, uh, really? Yeah, I, I was, I was. Uh, yeah, there's, there's been some uh, good old geomag storms hitting us today, and uh, yeah, I was not feeling up to it. It was, 
but mm. it, it started it started it started fading away towards uh, uh, towards the end of Grammy's show. So it was like, uh, all right, I guess I, I, guess <laughs> I, I, guess I can make it. <laughs> well. Uh, you know, I, I always I always feel better once I get into the show anyway. Right. So, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's always cool. Yeah. <sighs> yeah, so I, um... <laughs> da, da, da. <laughs> look at look at <laughs> Some of the uh, stuff you put in the request list. Cracking oh, me? me? You're cracking me up here. Oh, me? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know, but uh, they're good songs. No, I didn't say they weren't. I they're just, good things. I just, I just said I, I see them, and, 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 you're, and you're making me laugh. <laughs> oh, man. All right, uh, put that in there, too, because why not? Yeah. Another, another one. Another celebrate one. good times. Yeah, man. Let's just celebrate. Celebrate just good times. Come on. <laughs> right. Just live it up, people. I don't know what else to say. Who's that? Cool, cool in the gang? Who is that? Who's that band that did that? Cool in the gang. Yeah, yeah. Cool in the gang. <laughs> they had some good songs back in the day. Oh, sure. Yeah, no, they, they, were, they were cool. And they the were game. cool, man. And yeah, the game. They cool. Were cool. In the game. They were actually cool. <laughs> Let's go on yeah, and click that. What's happening? What what's happening? Well, I'm clicking my deal here, but it ain't clicking for me. I hate that. I hate that. That's my biggest pet peeve. One of them. Okay. Uh this is a link uh that Cowboy Tech uh, I believe Cowboy Tech anyway, put into the, the chat during uh, Grammy's show. Yeah, and she didn't cover it, so I, I want I want to do uh, cover a little bit of it because, well, you'll see why. Okay. Uh, this is on. How do I say this? Phenomenalisms. <laughs> dot, okay. dot com. Pheno, phenomenalisms. Dot com. Six plants other than cannabis that are high in healing cannabinoids. Now, see, I was really kind of unaware that the fact that other plants had cannabinoids in them. But uh, I, I guess they do. So Apparently. Cannabis, what? Apparently. Yeah, cannabis is not the only plant that contains medically beneficial cannabinoids. Although, okay. although it has driven the research to understanding the powerful therapeutic properties of these plant compounds, in actuality, there are several plants that are also rich in cannabinoids and benefit the body's endocannabinoid system, which is responsible for helping the body maintain internal balance or homeostasis, which is needed for attaining optimum health. To expand our understanding of cannabinoids, the endocannabinoid system, the scientists and botanists are exploring the prevalence of cannabinoids in many plants under or are plants used in natural remedies other than just cannabis. Below are six plants that are found to either contain the healing cannabinoids or affect the endocannabinoid system and some of the known therapeutic effects. Number one, coneflower, a.k.a. echinacea. There you go. <laughs> one, of, one of my favorites of all time. Anyway, this yep. plant... This plant is well known for its ability ability to help the body fight off the common cold. It's also used to relieve anxiety, fatigue, migraines, and arthritis. Echinacea is a bit of uh, different than cannabis because it uses cannabum what <laughs> Canna <laughs> can can Cannabimetics. <laughs> yeah, easy for me to say. Not in, easy to say. No. In, in, instead of cannabinoids, um, to engage the endocrine, endocannabinoid system, particularly well, the echinacea today, actually the the CB2 receptor, similar to THC in cannabis, the N alkylil acamides, amides, NAAs, whatever, in echinacea are responsible for regulating the immune system, pain, and inflammation. Then they have something called electric daisy or acamella 
Ola Rasia, <laughs> native to the Amazon region, this eclectic daisy is used to create a pain-killing gel. It successfully blocks the pain receptors and nerve endings as per trials conducted by Cambridge University. The compounds found in the electric daisy are N-isobutamolides. <laughs> okay, and similarly uh, to the other cannabinoid-like compounds, they regulate pain and inflammation. Uh, this natural remedy is emerging as a dental remedy for ailments such as impacted wisdom teeth. Then there's something called Helichrysum umbra. What? I can't say these words. Um, <laughs> uh, umbra saligrium. <laughs> I'm sure that's uh, wrong. Good try. Na native to South Africa, uh, this daisy has a strong mood stabilizing anti and antidepressant effect uh, due to the large amounts of cannabigenerol, cannabigenerol, whatever, uh, also <laughs> found in the cannabis plant. Uh, let's see, liverwort, which is Radula marginata. This plant, indigenous to New Zealand, contains amounts of large amounts of perotentolinic acid, <laughs> which is strikingly similar to THC, the, the psychoactive components in cannabis. It is believed to bind with the CB1 receptors just as THC, although the liverwort is not known to have any psychoactive effects. What it is known for is its ability to treat bronchitis, and historically it has been used to alleviate gallbladder, liver, and bladder problems. This one, interesting, cacao. Yes, the cacao plant has many therapeutic properties and is known to have a, uh, to be powerful, a delicious superfood. Cacao, uh, which affects the endocannabinoid system by deactivating the enzyme called FAAH, which typically breaks down the endocannabinoid known as anamanonide. <laughs> since anananide is identified to be the body's natural version of THC. We get natural THC. How cool is that? Uh, eating <laughs> eating natural chocolate uh, increases the amounts of anananide to the brain. Maybe that's why everybody, you know, the, the, you know, chocolate is such a addictive kind of thing. Right. Yeah. Although yep. THC because, You know, I mean, seriously, there are times where I feel like I need to eat chocolate. Well, there you go. Uh, it, I mean, it, that wasn't, like, it, it's gotten less and less since I got older, but I, I went through a phase there where, like, I, like, actually felt like I needed to eat chocolate. Okay, and this one... You know what I mean? Yeah, no, I, I, I absolutely understand that. I, I get it. I get it. This this next one, this last one, uh, is something I had no idea. It had these kind of healing effects. I eat lots of it. Or I put it on a lot of stuff. I don't I'd say I eat it because I don't just eat it. Mm -hmm. But I, turmeric, black pepper. Oh, black pepper. Okay, yeah, I black, use a lot pepper. Of black pepper. A very common aroma molecule very common. or terpene called beta carophyllene (BCP) found in the plant's essential oils and abundantly present in black pepper has been discovered to function as a as a cannabinoid. Uh, similar oh. to other plant-based cannabinoids, BCP binds with the CB2 receptors, giving it the therapeutic effect of reducing inflammation. Uh, various research has suggested the BCP could be used uh, for the treatment of arthritis and osteoporosis and may potentially increase the effectiveness of certain anti-cancer drugs. So there you have it, and thank you for posting that link. I'm pretty sure that was Cowboy Tech posted that link in the chat earlier, and I grabbed it, grabbed it up. Um, so uh, yeah, just you know, keep those plants in mind. Um, like I, like I said, the uh, purple coneflower, that's 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 the awesomeness. And uh, chocolate, yeah, great stuff, or cacao anyway. And and, yeah. and then the black pepper, and uh, I don't know where you get these other ones, the liverwort. Uh, Kila Scryum. Umbral Umbralicum and the Electric Daisy. Well, yeah. on your herb site. Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll check there. Um, but, but you know, I got the other ones. I got, I got I had half of them. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I um, I would take an echinacea 
today, yesterday, and today because I yesterday my nose was running and I felt like a cold was coming on. Not a bad one, just a head cold, but I felt a lot better today. Uh, you know that site. Even the name of the site is difficult to pronounce. <laughs> for, right. <laughs> for, for, phenomenalisms. <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, no kidding, right? <laughs> Oh, Phenomenal. man. Phenomenal. Phenomenalisms. Phenomenalisms. <laughs> Phenomenalisms. Oh, God. So here, since we're talking about these uh, smartphones. Oh, God. Yeah, here, what about... Oh, God. Here, here, here in the chat, let me share with you a couple of stories on the smartphones. Yeah, this smart is freaky, phones. people. Oh, but, but, but before I do that... I watched a movie last night there on the Amazon Prime. Oh, yeah? And it's called The Circle. I think I started watching that. Yeah? Yeah? It's got uh, Tom Hanks and... Uh, oh, no. Who's that, I have who's that little chick? Um, Christina Ritchie? No, 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 no. Kind of red-headed. Little, little chick? Scarlett Johansson? No, small girl. Um... I don't know. It's one of the famous ones. <laughs> no Fanning or Dakota Fanning or something? No, 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 no. No. One of the famous ones. Uh, anyway. <laughs> this doesn't tell me much. <laughs> one of the famous ones. I yeah, know. well, you know. It's okay. That's fine. Let's Any jerks in the movie The Circle? Absolutely. Um, <laughs> uh, oh, oh, yeah. I also had Patton Oswald in there, speaking of jerks. Um, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but... Tom Hanks was the biggest jerk, uh, obviously, since he was the uh, one of the co-stars of the movie. Um, anyway, it's about how would how would you put it? Somewhere between um, Elon Musk and Zuckerberg and Gates, okay, all, yeah. all, and uh, uh, all all kind of mixed together in this company that basically oh, Emma Watson. The, Emma Watson, exactly. That's the girl. All right, the girl yeah. from Harry Potter. Uh, okay, uh, she was famous yeah. for something. Her anyway, mommy. she's she's mommy. a little she's small, she's tiny. She is small. She's very petite. <laughs> yeah, you're correct. Anyway, she is very little. Anyway, I'm going to suggest that uh, anybody uh, you should you should watch that film. Um, okay, I will. And 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 it, it's it's uh, like uh, everybody was all into this whole thing of everybody should know everything about everybody at all times. Right, and that's not no. And 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 she she started got a, got a starting position there and then and quickly became known because of something bad she did and they were watching her. Oh, uh, I saw that. Did you? See, oh, you saw the movie? Yeah, I saw that. Okay, so yeah, and uh, so they they would uh, monitor everybody around the world and in the end, right? In, in the end, I'm not even gonna tell people what. It in was case, free, yeah. In case they haven't seen it because you should watch that though. Yeah. <laughs> so, is your phone listening to every your every word Probably. and yeah, watching you through your phone's camera? How thousands? This is not of, a rebroadcast. This is live. This, this is, is live. Hansel and Vinel. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, so it, how thousands of people are convinced coincidence adverts are anything but. Of course oh, they, I'm con I'm not I'm convinced that they are anything but a coincidence. Of, of they course, are not. No, this, they, your phone tracks you. They they they, they try to dis dispel the fact that they're doing it, even though it's obvious right. that they, they are. Right, they try to poo poo it, but they're yeah. doing it. It says, we were sitting at a rooftop restaurant 30 stories up overlooking the Empire State Building in New York when my daughter confessed that she thought she was being spied on by a professional network of cyber spooks. Look at this," uh, said Lois, representing me with her smartphone, where the advert for a snazzy little Instamatic camera was displayed. It had popped up a few seconds earlier uh, when, when she logged on to Instagram. She met my my quizzical "so what" face with exasperation. "What were we talking about just now in the street down there?" she said. Sure enough, we had been window shopping before our lunch reservation and spotted a little gadget shop. I remembered Lois had commented on the Instamatic camera on display. Drop oh my it. God! <laughs> we, we had a it's brief. It's like having a ghost to follow you all, at all times. We had a brief conversation cool. about how they were all the rage in the eighties. Uh, anyway, so she talks about it with her mom down on the street somewhere, 
and they go up to the top of the Empire State Building there, and, and all, all of a sudden, ads start popping up on our Instagram about these Instamatic cameras. <laughs> and uh, it says, uh, there were selfies of their day and good fun. Uh, how lovely that they were making a comeback. Uh, they talked about the Instamatics, she commented, and we moved on. Then, less than 20 minutes later, the advert popped up on Lois's phone for the exact same product. Same right. color, Isn't same, mo freaky? same model, everything. They were listening. They were watching. They were. <laughs> and, and and her mother says, oh, don't be daft. Who's listening? Who'd want to listen to us? Well, they listen to everybody. It's not you. You're yep. not special. They listen no, to not. every freaking buddy. They listen to us right now. <laughs> yes, they are. Hello there. <laughs> yeah. Out there. Says, I'm serious. Hope you're enjoying uh, yourself, whacking off. Uh, well, well, hey, if this one gets you off, I, you know. <laughs> right. <laughs> I got no words for you. <laughs> what a job. Sit and listen to shit. Yeah, hey. just, just, you know, every day, every, every day, normal people stuff. You're just going to sit out there and, and listen to it. <laughs> yeah, how boring would that be? Anyway, that's not a brand new article. That's from, uh, let's see what's that, when that was posted, if it even says up here at the top, um, December 2017. Okay. Okay, there you go. Now, uh, so not that long ago. But right. uh, th then you also know, uh, but a bit of a, okay. <laughs> this from the Metro.uk. Facebook forced to deny that it listens to every way it word you say on your phone. This is from last <laughs> October um, on the Metro. So it's it's no secret that Facebook spies on everything you do online with that yes. sort of chilling efficiency uh, that you'd associate with secret police in a dictatorship. But it's not just Facebook. It's everything. No, of course it's Everyone's not just fine. Facebook. But, it's not just Facebook. But, but, but they're, one, they're one of the, the worst ones. Oh, uh, yeah. Anyway, it says... But does the social media giant listen to every word you say near your smartphone, then serve up adverts based upon what you say? Lots of people claim... They base it on your location, though. Well, they do more like, than I that. I was at but, the Jeep dealership, and my phone knew that. Yeah, well, they do it by... by so then they think I'm, I want a fucking Jeep, so then they fucking... Or I gave them my, I, I gave them my personal information, you know. Like on a little card, you gotta fill out. So in order to look at a car or anything, you gotta do that, you know. Yeah, right. But but it's not just your location. It's your, it's it's whatever you say because your microphone's always listening. And if right. you got, if you got the camera on, your, the Jeep dealership. You got the camera on your phone. They're all watching through that. Um, yep. I was looking at a Jeep Compass. And the next day, all these ads kept popping up on Facebook for Jeep Compasses. Yeah. Like from Jeep, you right, know, but right. it was like so. Really? You're, at the, you're at the Jeep dealer saying they get that much, but then if you're looking at a compass, then then they they get. They know the, I'm looking at a compass from listening yeah. or whatever. It says, it says lots of people claim they've witnessed it happening, but a senior Facebook advertising exec said that they definitely don't listen in. Oh bullcrap! <laughs> oh, they just get the re by the research from the company that does listen in. Rob Rob Goldman, the company's vice president of advertising, says... They sell you out. Anyway, the, the vice president of advertising says, I run ads uh, product at Facebook. We don't, and we have never used your microphone for ads. Just not true. Oh, crap. <laughs> people, people chimed in on Twitter with their own tales of times when Facebook served up spooky adverts similar to what they were just talking about. <laughs> it's like having a ghost in your house. Or with you at all times, right in your car. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. It's like having a fucking ghost that's like a spy ghost. <laughs> Goldman. Yeah, don't, don't say Goldman. That's it. Like, he's, you can't, you can't, and his name is Rob. He's going to rob you, and he's, in, and he's Jewish. So, so that. <laughs> oh, my but, but uh, the one that got me here to this, to, to, to these articles, uh, was this one that, 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 uh, where is where, that? Where is that? Oh, here it is. Here it is. Um, uh, was this article on the Get Real, what, GetRealPhilippines.com? Okay. Okay. And it says, Facebook, here's the secrets that you keep when you're talking, what? when you're talking oh, yeah. in your sleep. 
this is the freakiest. This is weird. This is like really you listen, you listen to people on there fucking so, sleeping. So if you're if you if you keep your cell phone near you while you're right. sleeping and you talk in your sleep, then wh- whatever things you say that you normally aren't saying because they're whatever your secret thoughts, Facebook oh, is God. listening and they're recording these and and using them to, to target you with whatever. So Facebook is currently in a world of trouble after news about how a chunk of data harvested off of it was used by an analytics firm, Cambridge, Cambridge Analytica. See, I told you, they, they hire these firms to, like, crunch, crunch it down. Statistics right, and, it, and, and that that might be a, a, a little part of their of their word games or semantics. That right, no, no, we're right. not listening. We hired a company right. to do that for us. Yeah, someone. Is. <laughs> Cambridge Analytica generates uh, insights allegedly used to help current U.S. President Trump win the election in 2016. While many observers wonder whether this attention is due to closer than normal scrutiny from the media. Uh, Facebook has attracted over the last couple of years as Democrats uh, scrambled to find a scapegoat for that defeat. Facebook's predicament has opened up a debate bigger than mere data privacy issues. How much insight into the human condition does it really need? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so that's exactly, right, exactly the song. They're, the song they're talking about here, Fox, uh, the, the romantic tune. Anyway, advanced analytics applied to data collected from ordinary people's interaction with social media sites like Facebook reveal stuff about us we're not fully aware of at a conscious level. It's like being shown a mirror that is able to reflect the person behind the face. Harvesting insight from social media data is a breakthrough in behavioral science because it allows us to see past the public persona and into the private and even subconscious character. Unlike the data collected from surveys and polls, uh, data from social media interactions is more representative of natural behaviors, preferences, and inclinations. Because whereas we are conscious about what we, what and how we respond to a survey, how we re- re- interact with, say, Facebook is uncontrived and driven by deeper personal motivations. As a result, social media data is unprecedented in both its richness and quality of representation. Wow. <laughs> Facebook may as well be singing the lyrics from the 1984 hit, Talk It In this, Your Sleep, by the Romantics to its users. From the seemingly benign interactions with content that appears on our Facebook feeds, what we like, what we subscribe to, what we comment, who we interact with, and uh, the most, what we search, etc., data is captured and accumulated by Facebook's data banks. Each data point and pixel that, that goes in uh, goes on to take its place in an ever clearer picture of what our inner thoughts are and what drives these thoughts. So not just what you're thinking, how you're thinking, why you think what you're thinking. Holy crap. <laughs> and some lyrics from that song. Don't you know you're sleep? Some lyrics from that song. Don't you know you're sleeping in a spotlight? All your dreams that you keep inside, you're telling me the secrets that you just can't hide. <laughs> it's like having a, a group of strangers living with you. Oh, yeah. accompanying you everywhere you go. And not not just you know benign strangers. These are these these are these are a malevolent group that are that want to do. Yes. Well. First off, they want to profit off your ass. Right. Uh, oh, definitely. Yeah, and then, and then they want to be able to predict what you're going to do and who you're going to it's do it with you. and where you're going to do it at. Right. <laughs> it's, it's all. It's all oh. very. It's all very creepy. Um, it is. <laughs> so. I mean, uh, really. Yeah. No. No shit. No. No doubt about yeah, it. Yeah. It's like, come on. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, it's like having a group of strangers living with you, like riding your car every day. You know, yeah, yeah, a group of strangers there that knows gr- everything about you. A group of spies. They are. It's like it's, 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 it's like having a group of spies in your yes. house. And, in and, your house. And, and and you invited them in. You said, yep. "Hey, come on in." Here, they yeah, did. <laughs> you let them in. We want you in my house. <laughs> yep. Wow. Oh, 
God. All right, we're going to play some more music right here right now. Um, okay, good. Yeah, yeah. And uh, we're going to kick it off with a little of the fish woman. The fish woman. <laughs> Take it away, Sam. All right. Ah, uh, yes. The Doors, the Wasp, Texas Radio, and the Big Beat. Uh, before that, for the Mighty Moose Girl, we had Peter Dosh doing Johnny B. Good. Reggae. And we kicked it off with the wonderful Samantha Fish. And somebody's always trying from the Bean Blossom Blues Fest last year. So, uh, great, great stuff. Uh, if, you, if you like good music, it's great stuff. <laughs> yes. yes, it is. Uh, that, that's a good article, even though, though it is, does come from Wikipedia Poxified. Stoned Immaculate, the music of the doors. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. Good stuff. Nice. I love the doors. I'll tell you, man, it's uh, they, 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 they were, they were uh, uh, happening all in themselves. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> No doubt about that one. Different, different than different than everybody else. Yeah. Um, you know, there was there was no no band quite like them. No, we well, had Rayman Zarek on keys. I mean, he's incredible. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Robbie Krieger. Yep. Um, Jim Morrison, of course, is incredible. Of course. He didn't like to be the front guy. He didn't really want to be a rock and roll dude. He wanted to be a poet. A writer. Well, and he was. Yeah, he was. He did accomplish that. I mean, obviously, he wrote oh, some yeah. of their songs. I think, maybe sure. not. Yeah, no, no, definitely. Um, but he uh, he was a character, that's for sure. Oh yeah. He didn't like cops. Well, who does? <laughs> yeah, he was the uh, the son of a general, I believe. <laughs> a Navy general. Oh, God. So you can only imagine what his upbringing might have been like. It wasn't good. Turd. <laughs> what? Turdsy, ratsy bud? What kind of stuff is that? <laughs> that's someone joking around. That's that's schwagweed. <laughs> that's ditchweed. You don't want that. Throw that shit out. <laughs> you want something better than that fucking shit. That's just someone trying to fucking be funny. Oh man, I tell you, <laughs> yeah, we got a funny group here. Oh, by the way, yeah. for for anybody that doesn't know, over there on on the Real Liberty Media site, um, I I updated this week the uh, um, quotes database uh, on the website. Okay. Uh, so uh, yeah, yeah, it's uh, it's cool. That uh, it took me a while to get everything. To get, oh, so, so it was such a mess. It was such a mess. Um, yeah, I bet, yeah. So I had to go through and clean out every quote or, you know, uh, align it so that it worked well in the database. Oh, okay. Uh, but, uh, yeah, no, it was, cool. uh, it, it, it was cool. Awesome. It was cool. Okay, <clears throat> let me just see if this is a real thing. This could be breaking news. This could be bullshit. Doesn't have a date on here. I hate that so bad. Oh, April 13, 2017. Now, I don't know if you guys knew this, but United States Federal Court rules that females are free to display their breasts in public. Say, say, repeat that. This is what it says here. Don't quote me. The headline is, United States Federal Court rules females are free to display their breasts in public. Three cheers to that. <laughs> free the nipple. Um, <laughs> uh, free and Slave wants to know what's up with all the Doors tunes. It, it's a random chance, man. Uh, I, I, I don't know what's up, what's up with all the Doors tunes. Moose Girl had requested a bunch. I already had a couple of Doors requests in there. Um, I, I, you know, sometimes it's the Doors. Sometimes it's the Who. Sometimes... Uh, it's the Rolling Stones. It's uh, you, you never know. Um, uh, 
so many so many great bands out there, but sometimes it, it lines up where we get a bunch from a particular band. So um, I, I'm all for. Why not play them all? You know. Yeah, I, I'm I'm all for um, the women showing their breasts in public. Yeah, I have a problem. <laughs> I mean, I, this is a real thing. Like I said, this could be a totally, this could be like an onion site for all I fucking know. I don't know. Let's see, awareness. I will do research into it tomorrow. Awareness. I'm not broadcasting. Dot com. I will do more research when I'm not broadcasting. The, people can request Neil, but I think we played. Who? Uh, Sweet Caroline. Oh, we we used point. to we we'll play some. Uh, we 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 played Neil Neil what was his name Neil um Neil Diamond Diamond yeah that's that's Asmo's band you know he or singer for for whatever reason he he loves the Neil Diamond yeah he does so you know I got nothing against Neil Diamond who who mentioned Neil Diamond someone in the chat I'm missing it I don't see it oh oh Cowboy Tech there he is yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So good. Uh, go for it, Moose Girl. Show them boobies. Uh no. I even though I can legally, I'm not going to. No, <laughs> I'm not going to. <laughs> there it is. I there it is. They, they, they talk. Know, they, they, like, they talk. <laughs> you come to certain age where you just can't do shit like that. You just can't. Here, here it is. They, you they, know, they, they don't want to. They even, <laughs> they even talk about it in this article. Have you ever heard of the activist group Free the Nipple? <laughs> I think so, but so they, they have staged many protests throughout different places, gathering topless and such. They believe, as many others do, that female breasts should not be sexualized. Well, I, I don't know about that, but uh, you know, if you want to show them, I'm glad to take a peek. Free <laughs> or gawk. <laughs> <laughs> Now here's something that you may in your dreams, Vinny. In your dreams, buddy. Yeah, yeah in your just, dreams. Just buddy. tell him that you are here. You can picture me that way if you want to, but he, you know, he don't. Mean, he don't like... know. <laughs> he don't. He don't know. Yeah, yeah. She broadcasts topless on the radio. Yeah, on the radio where <laughs> no one can see me. <laughs> okay, this is something that y'all may find useful at some point in time. And, I, and I'd kind of like to have one for myself. All right. It says, this identity-stealing baseball cap that uses <laughs> infrared light to fool facial recognition cameras into thinking you're someone else. Wow. So Weird. In, infrared light is invisible to the naked eye, but it's picked up by camera systems. The new cap fools facial recognition software by projecting infrared onto your face. This covertly distorts... Uh, images picked up by the recognition system cameras. The systems could be used to project the image of someone else onto your face to access gadgets protected by face lock. Um, it's a baseball cap that you put on, and it mm. can it can fool the facial recognition systems. Um, and you could you can you can get somebody's face like um, if you wanted to pretend or not pretend, but because other people aren't going to see you that way, just the cameras are. But like. Um, <laughs> Let's say you, you wanted to do some nasty stuff. You could like put Donald Trump's face on your face in, in the camera. <laughs> right, you can do that. <laughs> yeah. See, you would have to know what face to use, though. Well, well right, and so you'd have to have like a, a you know a library of faces. Uh, right, right. Uh, built built in. So, um, and they've got they've got uh, uh, pictures here. Um, they, Moby, I guess that's like, he's like a singer or something. Um, yes. Hoi Chang, I have no idea who that is. Um, Me either. Vladimir, but it doesn't look like Putin. I don't know who that Vladimir is. So anyway, they they this you know, um, this Chinese guy put these different four faces on his face and <laughs> and, and made it made him think that he was that person. So it's a tiny little thing, and I just you just put this 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 baseball hat on. It's got this thing on it. And, and then you can, uh, you know, goof around and, and make it look like uh, you're that other person and <laughs> screw it. Weird. Them. It's weird. <laughs> I like it. Um, 
it'd, it'd be a good thing to have, you know, like if you're walking down there, you know, because they got the, uh, the the face recognition cameras everywhere now. So uh, you could <laughs> walk down the street, pretend you're, you know, uh, whoever. You could you could pretend you're um, um, pick a woman. <laughs> oh, just anyone? Yeah, just whatever. You can... uh, Angelina Jolie. Okay, you'll, you'll be Angelina Jolie <laughs> walking down the street, except except you, you look better than her without the face stuff. I don't know about that one. But well, whatever. I'm, tell, I'm telling you. <laughs> I wouldn't want to look like her. I'm not saying I was just that was like one that came to mind. Okay. Yeah. So there you go. You're looking like Madonna walking down the road. Uh, ew! No! Ew. <laughs> ew! Hideous woman! Hideous witch-looking woman! No! 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 Uh. <laughs> no! <laughs> uh, all right. Now this is uh, this is a little flashback article from back in 2014. Okay. But I thought I'd bring it up because all right. the government's a bunch of idiots, which we all know. Yeah, we, yeah. Yeah. Uh, but but here it is. The FBI says it can't find hackers to hire because... <laughs> oh, I saw this. <laughs> because... Because they all smoke weed. They all smoke pot. Yes. Says, <laughs> the guy says, I have to hire a great oh worker. God, this is bullshit, though. This is ridiculous. This is like a total BS article. It should, it's like really, come on. He says, he says, I have to hire a great workforce to compete with those cyber criminals, and some of those kids want to smoke weed on the way to the interview. No, they want to smoke weed in the interview. <laughs> the hell with you on the way, shit. During uh, the interview. So anyway, so this is from uh, May 21st, 20, uh, 2014. It says, after being chastised for his comments about marijuana, uh, Senator Jeff Sessions, he was a senator at that point, uh, FBI Director Comey, Wonderful. he was the director at that point, told those in attendance at a Senate hearing on the Bureau's oversight that he was only kidding. Of course, we know better now he wasn't only kidding. He's a piece of scumbag. Uh, yep. He says, I'm absolutely dead set against using marijuana, he said at the hearing. I don't want young people to use marijuana. It's against the law. We have a three-year uh, ban on marijuana. I didn't say that I'm uh, going to change that ban. I'm going to have to grapple with that change in my workforce. It's no secret the federal government is having a hard time hiring cyber security experts, largely because many hackers find it more lucrative deals that don't involve working with these assholes at the government. But there's another wrinkle. The FBI now says that its drug testing policies are keeping experts off the payroll. <laughs> Duh! <laughs> and I say, great, that's great. I say, you know what, people are just dumb. If you think the, pot is bad and not beneficial to the planet, then you're a fucking dumbass. Well, the, the thing right? the, I'm the, just saying. The thing to medicine, me is... Medicine, it, 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 alcohol is worse. Like, you will have more productive people on pot versus hungover the next day. Well, the, the thing to me is... You know, people if, don't think if, right about this thing, you, and if, they need to get their heads straightened out about it. It just pisses me off, the, the miseducation. You know, people are misinformed and miseducated, so they talk shit about it, and they don't even know what they're fucking talking about. The, 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 thing, the, the thing is, if you want the best hackers... You're not going to get them if you don't take people that smoke weed, right? Because exactly. they you are they that, are they that, have, that part of their brain. Right? Yeah. I mean, you need the weed. It helps you think creatively, and you need to be able to think creatively to to, to be a good hacker. And it, it, <laughs> you guys are just fucked up in in, in your yeah. in, in, in your thinking. Ass backwards, uh, fucking motherfucking dumbasses, being just lying because they know it's fucking not harmful. They know that alcohol is more deadly. They fucking know. They're not. No. A, they're not stupid. Right. Right. No, they fucking know exactly what they're fucking doing. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, they're just being stupid about how they put the information out there. 
Now, and then they think, oh, I said, oh, I contradicted myself. You know, and then they fire the staffer that didn't fucking cover it up before it got revealed. You know what I mean? Someone's head rolls. That's how it works. These guys are scumbags. They're fucking just, ooh, you anyway, would not like them. You anyway, would not want to hang out with them. From like, the, from the, from that from that no, I, I no, would, you know you would not want to know these evil <laughs> fucking people. No, you don't. Anyway, from that I roll into this because okay. this year California uh, legalized recreational marijuana. Right. And, was, and they legalized, thought they, quote unquote. they they thought it was going to be this huge monster thing. They right. were going to be the biggest pot place in the be world. Like Colorado. But they're not. And you know why not? Fucking feds? Because they tax the holy fuck out of it. Oh, okay. So, well, imagine that. <laughs> and So here's the article from the Fresno Bee. This is an industry in crisis. High taxes, black market threaten the pot business. Well, why do you think you still got the black market? It's because of your right. high taxes, you idiot. Dumbasses. And, and, and you also have... You also have all the regulations that make it so you can only have X amount, which is the stupidest thing in the world. Why do you say, oh, you can only have an ounce or two ounces or three plants or whatever the hell the, their rules are out there? I have no idea. People that grow it themselves. Well, but, but you know, if they want to, they say, oh, we're going to treat it like alcohol. Well, you're not treating me like alcohol. No, you're not. Because I could, you don't have no limit on how many beers someone can yeah, have. Yeah, I could, I could go buy a tanker full of beer. Right, <laughs> and you guys would have no problem with it, but but if I want to have this, uh, and an ounce of pot could mean anything it, because it, it it comes in different uh, dryness, you know. So it it, it right. could be a lot or it could be not a lot. Uh, yeah. any, anyway, so uh, the article here: um, three months into the start of California's recreational marijuana market, industry leaders are voicing concerns that sales are not meeting projections. High taxes, complicated regulations, and a thriving black market. Again, a thriving, uh, thriving black market because of the high taxes and complicated regulations. Uh, hello. <laughs> um, the the leaders pressed government officials to make changes during Tuesday's gathering of an estimated 600 people at the California Industry Association conference. Uh, this is an industry in crisis. President of the association's board and co-founder of Kiva Confections, the manufacturer of edibles. Um, <laughs> this is me sounding the alarm. Government officials who spoke at the conference said they are committed to making this the regulatory changes needed to help the industry achieve success. Uh, attendees also heard from state lawmakers who are trying to make changes to the system, including some who likely would have been antagonists just a few years ago. Anyway, you can read it for yourself. It, it's, it's, it is what it is, and it is as expected. It's because they're morons. Yes, <laughs> they are. <laughs> it's because they, they want to have all this tight control over the weed. And they can't. They can't. They can never control. You can't control a fucking plant that grows like it does. Right. That's what they call it weed. Because it grows like a freaking weed, like a dandelion, you know. Not yep. as fast as a dandelion, but three months, you know. Fuck. Yeah, oh yeah. You know? I, mean, it, it, and I mean, come on. If no one wants to fucking buy government weed? <laughs> the, Why would you? This legal I mean, it's government <laughs> weed, but the government's involved because it's taxed by the government. It says, legalization is off to a ragged start due to black market sellers siphoning off customers who don't want to pay. Well, you're, the, the black market sellers were always there. Um, you're, you're the ones right. that are siphoning off customers, and right. you're siphoning exactly. off very many. Because, well, you've you got... Want a piece, they want a piece of it. Yeah. So, right, you know. So, in California, in addition to a 15% excise tax, there's also a 9% sales tax added on. So you're talking 24 percent right there, and and then you're talking about I mean these people have to run these shops and uh, pay all those expenses and deal with all the regulations of doing that and only some people could get them and they got to pay for a license to be able to sell it. It's a mess. It's, it's yeah, a mess. So, it's all this red tape and bureaucracy and everything. And yeah, you know, 
you, it can be accomplished, but they make it so difficult. I mean, you have to have money. You have to have knowledge, you know, what you're doing. And it's just so, com they, they convolute it, make it complicated. Right. So, so much that it fucks it all up. You know, it's just, it could be just simple, you know, but no, they have to make it all fucking messed up. Of course. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> it's like, that's fucking ridiculous. Yeah, yeah, this is just nuts. Um, oh, oh, I wanted to share this article. I found this earlier. It had nothing to do with... I, I, I just found it so bizarre. <laughs> Not the main point of it, but, <laughs> but, but what goes on? What goes on? Okay, this is posted on the Kansas City Star. KansasCity.com. Yeah. Cop sucked suicidal man's toes and sexually assaulted him at hospital, Chicago police say. What? Oh. <laughs> Listen. Is this the Onion? <laughs> no, it's not the Onion. I told you it's okay. the Kansas City Star. <laughs> And I, 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 I wanted this to be. I wanted this to be. Uh, just making not, sure, because I've been burned before, Graham. I, I wanted. I wanted this before. to be not a real story. I don't like it. I was. I was hoping this was not a real story, but it is. Okay, <laughs> that's what I was hoping. A man who was being held by police on a misdemeanor charge was sexually assaulted twice by one of his guards Jeez. while at the hospital on February third. Prosecutors say now Officer Carlisle Calhoun. 46, a 10-year veteran of the police force, faces multiple wow. charges in the alleged assault. Police were holding an unnamed sub suspect for misdemeanor charge when he began saying he was suicidal, leading Calhoun and another officer to drive him to the local hospital for psychiatric evaluation. With the suspect chained to the bed and the other, <laughs> other, uh, other officer away eating food, Calhoun allegedly began giving the man relationship advice before massaging the victim's feet and sucking his toes. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> says, then he allegedly grabbed the restrained man's genitals and pulled out his phone and snapped a picture. Oh, God. <laughs> the other officer returned, and Calhoun escorted the man to the bathroom, the paper reported. In the restroom, the officer allegedly performed oral sus sex on the suspect to protests before they returned to his hospital room. <laughs> Gee. <laughs> this guy, this, this cop, he's, you know, I, I, is that the well, only way you can find, I mean, is, you want to do this to some guy? Fine, but go find a willing participant. Don't take right. some oh guy. Gosh. Don't take some guy you got captive, chained to the bed, and start doing a bunch of weird shit to him. <laughs> <laughs> like what the holy fuck? Uh, well, apparently the the cop is being held on a two hundred thousand dollar bond, charged with aggravated criminal assault and official misconduct. He's also suspended without pay, according to the AP. So. um... Oh my God! <laughs> wow. So on a misdemeanor charge, they don't say what the misdemeanor charge was, but uh, <laughs> just crazy. Wow, poor <laughs> guy. <laughs> and on that note, let's play some more That's music. Torture. <laughs> oh, but I am the police. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God! <laughs> All right, let's do some too. <laughs> Oh man! <laughs> yeah, we find the stories here. <laughs> That's uh that was a apoxified set, that whole uh, apoxified request set there. That was whole with celebrity skin before that cool in the gang was celebration and we kicked it off with the romantics and talking in your sleep. Uh reference back to a story we were talking about earlier. <laughs> uh good good set there, Pox. <laughs> 
All right. You there? I'm the here. You're the here. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say there because you said, are you there? And then I switched to here. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> A little tongue-tied. All right. Well, that's cool. That's cool. It's weird not having a dog to take out, like, we're still getting used to not having a dog here. It's, like, really weird. Yeah, well, it's, 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 yeah, no, it's uh, interesting not having, you You have to get up and, I'm taking the dog out. Right, you just, it, it messes up your routine and everything. No, it's fine, it's good, it's, you know, I, I we, we miss Marty, just like you yeah. did, you know, so. Um, yeah, it sucks. It's hard, but it had to be done. That's the thing about having a pet. It's the last thing you can you have to do for your pet. I mean, right? You know, I, it was breaking my heart to watch it suffer. I just could not do it anymore. I'm like, this has to be done. Yeah, I know, free. I'm looking around. I don't know what to do yet. I'm just biding my time right now about getting another dog. I would love another dog because I love dogs. I seriously do. Like, I need a dog in my life. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Sure. It's just so nice because, like, we've, we've been talking about Marty, like, through our grieving process and everything, like, bringing up memories of him and funny things he did and all this stuff. And, like, for me, coming home from work, like, he would be sitting in the front window on the couch or whatever, and as soon as he see me pull in the driveway, he'd, like, get right down. He knew it was me. He'd get right down. He'd run right to the back door. Yeah. You know what I mean? Well, speaking about dogs... And, like, now yeah. it's elementary school students. Hey, hey, from hey, shut up there. Uh, speaking about dogs and how, you know, but kids love dogs, right? Yeah. And, and you, ever seen, you ever seen kids that are just, like, afraid of dogs? Yes, I have. A whole bunch of them? All at the same time? Not a whole bunch of them, but I've seen kids that are deathly afraid of dogs, yes. Okay. And people. Adults. That are like afraid of dogs. Okay, well, this story from Charlotte, North Carolina. Okay. Seven children were injured when a stray dog made its way into a Lansdowne I el saw that. elementary school in Charlotte Monday afternoon. The dog walked onto the playground while children were outside and managed to get inside the school when staff uh, brought the children back in. What? Uh, some of the children were frightened and were reacting by running and making noise. Uh, right. the, the dog then became overstimulated by this reaction and yes. began, began to jump on and bite some of the children. Uh, yes, I can see that happening. Seven, seven children sustained minor injuries in the incident. Um, said Six of the, the students received level three bites. Now, the thing is, these kids were the problem, not the dog. Uh, and and what what <laughs> you, you know there's all this talk about this school safety crap and everything going on and well who was the idiot that let the dog go into the school uh, right that's the thing is if this dog I mean come on you don't let the dog go into school this is it, if so, you're just letting stray dogs wander into your school put yourself in between the kids and the dog and do not let the dog I, I go mean, into how, the school I how, mean how safe is this school if they're just oh letting... my god right <laughs> this is stupidity. <laughs> So, <laughs> that's just dumb. Yeah, um, that was it, handled poorly. Anyway, it, it was a, it was a pit bull, um, apparently. Yeah, it was. It was American Staffordshire Terrier. Yeah. So, um, anyway, so it says uh, the the dog is being held by animal control and will remain in, in rabies quarantine. Uh, at the shelter for it's, ten well, days. Well, it doesn't have rabies. No, no, I imagine is, not. Hazard no, because they already said that, that the guy showed them the, the the papers for the rabies shot right, and all that right. stuff. But they had to put a mandatory hold with yeah. some dumbass rule, you know. Screw, screw you, huh? Oh, yeah, well, even though you got the paper, we can't trust that, you know. We still got to hold your dog. And, yeah, so yeah, the kids were being the kids were being idiots. And, well, and, and, because you, know, you get a bunch of kids at a school, Graham, and if you get a, like twenty kindergartners. That's freaking loud. You almost need earplugs to deal with that. the sound of that. <laughs> Don't. Seriously, it's going to simulate a dog. My point is, the dog should have never been allowed entrance to the school. That Someone should have put themselves between the dog and the kid. 
I mean, <laughs> there had to have been someone at that fucking school that has a dog that knows how to deal with a fucking dog, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, come on, people. I and mean, the thing is, it's, it's, don't blame the dog for a human stupidity. Right. You blame blame the school for whoever's. I mean, you don't just right. let dog wandering around and get into the... let the dog wander into the fucking building. And then into, actually into a classroom. <laughs> what the fuck? Unbelievable. Yeah, it's craziness. It's craziness. So, wow. Um, yeah, so you, you you want to shoot the dog because because the dog was being a dog and the kids were well, being... Well, definitely shoot it if it's got rabies. Well, but see, it don't. they didn't take the owner's word for it. They didn't fucking well, they got the believe paper. his paperwork. They asked for the papers. He showed them, but they're still like, oh, no, we have to still hold your dog. You know, it's like, what the hell? Right. You know, so. bureaucracy. Hey, Space Sucks. Wolf didn't even see you show up. Who? Space Wolf. Okay. Well, yeah, I like it, Space and There's some purple on there. It's really cool. <laughs> right, because some dumbass doesn't know how to deal with a dog handle. And they weren't paying attention. They didn't put themselves in between the fucking students. You mean you tell me no one saw the dog sneaking in alongside the students? Because we're talking like 20 kids, right? Yeah. So you have a line. You know, there's no way that dog should have been allowed to wander in there. They don't know if it was a stray even. It might not have been. Could have just got off his leash or something. It's tiles. I don't know. Right. It might have been a stray, but we don't know that for sure. No. They said it was because no one, like, there owned it. You know, but seriously, no one there owns a dog at that school. Bull crap. There's some, someone there at that school that knows how to handle a dog. And if they were afraid of the dog, they should have called that person to come out there and deal with the dog and not let the dog get in the building. It's beyond stupidity that the dog got in the building. Absolutely. This should not have happened. And you don't go shooting the dog for that. No. Well, they didn't shoot the dog. No, no, but he, Han said he wishes they shoot the dog. No, they, sh no, no, no. <laughs> no, a dog got overstimulated because of some dumbass let it into the building where there's a 20 screaming fucking kindergartners and it's loud. And so you know what happens well, wait. when it, he, he says, know. He says, shoot the dog because it bit children. Once they do that, you can never trust them again. Well, how about shoot the teachers for letting the dog in there? You can never trust them again. Right, exactly. You can't trust them. <laughs> not the dog's fault. This is not the dog's fault in this case, Jade Red. Right, uh, right. Whatever the fuck. This is okay. not the dog's fault. Okay, I'm going to close out with this story here just because okay. all right. we, all, we all know it's true, but now they have 100 peer-reviewed studies that conclude cannabis cures cancer. <laughs> okay, good. It says, one of the advantages of cannabinoids is that they target specifically the tumor cells. They don't have any toxic effect on normal non-tumor cells. Cannabis has been making a lot of noise lately. In November 2016, uh, 2016 Australia became the first entire continent to legalize cannabis. Uh, in the first country to fully legalize is Uruguay. Um, so you got a continent and you got a country and... Anyway, yep. anyway, in January 2017, Germany legalized medical cannabis, allowing patients with exceptional cases to get a cannabis prescription from the doctor, as well as a refund for the upfront cost of cannabis from their health insurance. This spring, Canada is set to legalize, well, <laughs> not really. Canada is doing some really nasty shit about their legalization crap. Uh, personal use of cannabis. In recent years, the support for cannabis legalization in the U.S. has reached a tipping point. Uh... It says, according to surveys, support for legalization has risen from 31% in 2000 to 60% in 2016. 28 states and D.C. allow cannabis for medical purposes. There is evidence that cannabis destroys cancer, cures several ep ep epilepsies, severe epilepsy, not several, uh, treats muscle spasms caused by multiple sclerosis, and saves right. lives. The National Cancer yes. Institute admitted that cannabis oil kills cancer cells. It the, does. The Cancer Institute that has been so dead set against this has admitted right. that it works. So, uh, in, right, any, they've in, been in denial, but they can't deny it any longer because there's been studies done in Europe and everything, and they, they just can't deny the research, and they can't deny it. They, they, they 
they have to backpedal on it because they're like, oh, yeah, people are catching on now to our fucking, you know, scam. Right. So they're backpedaling. So there you go, 100 period Which is, it's, it's almost too little too late because so many fucking lives could have been saved. And and the cancer treatment, quote unquote, could have been, could be more humane than it Absolutely. is right now because the cancer treatment that they prescribe right now is bullshit. Oh, Grammy was, was talking about it on Wednesday. Yeah. Chemo. Yeah, chemo is deadly. It's chemo and radiation. It the chemo is what's killing you. Absolutely. Not the fucking cancer. The fucking chemo. Right. Anyway, we got to do our last set here. Yep, let's do that. So, uh, enjoy wow, this. Wow, time flew today. It sure did. Wow. Yeah, yeah. That yeah. was quick. Wow. So, this, this first All song right. I'm playing, this is, this is for you, Hans. Enjoy. <laughs> Black Betty, indeed. Yes, indeed. That's Ram Jam from back in 1977, doing the one of the most awesome versions of Black Betty ever. Uh, before that, we had Beth Hart with Love is a Lie, and we kicked it off with Green Day doing American Idiot. That's right, the uncensored version. <laughs> Not that one that's got all the clips taken out of it in a very annoying manner. Um <laughs> I was trying to find it the other day, and, and, I, and I came across the one, and it was just all like, just bleeps all over the place in that song. Anyway, um, <laughs> it's going to wrap it up here tonight for the show. Uh, yep. show be sure tomorrow tune in for uh, the Dark Table at noon Eastern, um, and uh, I'll, I'll be putting up the, uh, oh, it's, I guess it's already up there on the YouTube, uh, the, the Vinny show from today. If you missed Vinny's show, talking about all of the uh, the Bundy stuff, uh, very interesting. He had a, he had a good guest on there, and then uh, on Sunday morning or Sunday noon Eastern, I will be on with the Blues in the trivia here in the chat. Have a good old time. Uh, Hal Anthony yeah. Hal Anthony be on in the afternoon with behind uh, the wood shed and Gary Allen and Gigi's boo in the evening on the the road less traveled. And, yeah, man. Uh, Grammy starts back again on Wednesday at our normal time, 7 p.m. Eastern. Don't miss All it. Right. Uh, I think that's it. That's it, man. All right. Peace. Peace.